tell you, the Lord is Amen. good. Amen. Lord God. I don't even want to open my mouth and ruin what we've got here tonight. But I tell you, the Lord is gracious. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. He's everything that we need tonight. Amen. And I thank God for being saved. Amen. I feel like Reminds me of that old scripture. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. <laughs> oh, the Lord needs to pour out a revival on this land, I tell you. But it starts with me and you tonight. In our hearts. You know, I was listening to that old message today at work from Brother Nathan when he preached here that one time. On uh, in Genesis chapter 12, it said, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy exceeding great reward. And, we, and he stopped right there and shouted for about 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm glad he is everything we need tonight. He is my reward, Brother Steve. I don't need uh, a riches and an honor. I don't need a mansion. All that I need to see is that tabernacle. And the Bible said that the Lamb is going to be that tabernacle. Yes, God. Praise the Lord. We're in Galatians chapter 4 tonight. We were left off there the last time in, chapter, in verse 14 of chapter 4. And I just want to read this one verse here, chapter 15, and then we can pray and be seated here. Where is then the blessedness you spake of? For I bear record you that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Dear Heavenly Father God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, through the power of the blood for the Lamb of God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you sent your Son to die for me, God. I'm unworthy, Father Lord, to even call upon you tonight, but I thank you, Lord God. I'm commanded by the Bible to come boldly to the throne of grace and to seek help in a time of need. And if I ever need you, God, it's when I'm up here standing behind thy sacred desk, God, preaching the holy word of God, Lord, a, a calling and a, a vocation that I'm not worthy of, but I just desire to be faithful to thee, O oh God. Bless each and every heart tonight and go with us, Lord, and guide us, Lord, as we read and study thy scriptures. May you have all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll tell you. You know, I was sitting there this morning. I got up and I just, I got up and I looked at the Bible. I opened up here to Galatians and I looked at this verse and just that first line came out to me, Sister Lise. You know, in that verse up there, he talks about how Paul talked about how he came to him and he preached him the gospel. And then all of a sudden, after he had left, he left them standing on the Word of God. That's right. And that's what we are to do with people. When, they, when, they, when someone desires to be saved, you know, I, I got such a wonderful blessing when Dad called me and told me about Bruce getting saved. Glory to God. I mean, you don't hear stuff like that anymore. But God can still do it. Yeah. And he said, you know, when he said it, it reminded me of, of Paul Robbins, uh, happened, something happened similar to him, but it was late at night, well, like 3 o'clock in the morning. Some fella called him and said, you got to come. And he got up, and he drove the same place, I think it was Oak Ridge, and went down there to that man's house and got down there and read him the Bible, prayed with him, and he got saved and born again. And he left him standing on, thus saith the Lord. And that's exactly what happened when down, I mean, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. It's not that a God can't do it. But I'm just telling you that the times that he had been here sitting back there on that pew back there. I can see him sitting there. Sitting back there hearing the gospel. And that whole time, Sister Elise, the, the Spirit of God and the Word of God was abiding in his bosom. And I believe it was a fire shut up in his body. And he got to a point, God got him to that place to where that he convicted him and he got, God knows how to bring us to the place of repentance. He knows how to put you and me exactly where we need to be, where we're going to call out on Him. And it reminds me of those times when Israel came out of Egypt and they brought them over there. I can't even pronounce the name of that place where they were at by the Red Sea. But I looked up the definition. It says the mouth of the gorges. Hey, there's high mountains on one side. The sea's behind them and the death and hell is pursuing them. And they had nowhere to go. And Moses just said, be still. Right. And see the salvation of the Lord. Hey, you don't have to do nothing. You just have to stand there and let God do all of it. Glory to God. That's what Paul told them here. He said, where then is the blessedness that you speak of? Where is the joy 
in the child of God's life today. The Bible talks about, in, in the book of Psalms, David said, Restore unto me, O God, the joy of thy salvation. Thy salvation. Not mine. Salvation is never yours or mine. Jonah said it in the belly of the whale, salvation is of the Lord. God got him in the place of repentance too. God's got me in the place of repentance many times. And a lot of it was because a great man of God was preaching this book right here. Or I was reading it. And the Spirit, the author of this book, who abides within me, said, hey, you're wrong. <laughs> And then it turns over there and says, but let me show you how you can make it right. That's I love that about the Word of God. But Paul was asked him, where's the blessedness you spake of? You know, the reason for all the joy and the peace and contentment, and, and contentment in our life is absolutely the simple revelation that Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. What a wonderful thing to know that you are lost and undone without God. You're desperately and hopelessly lost. And nothing can be done for the situation that you're in. But then you see Jesus. And then you see Calvary. And then God says, look, I'm going to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. I'm going to do something that you don't deserve. But because of my nature, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> That's the grace of God. Law is different. The whole book we've been talking about, law and grace. But see... I've got to a point here where I, I figured out something that after reading and studying, reading after all these fellows and praying and asking God, that it's not law and grace. It's law or grace. You choose. Hey, last night Iris came in there, we was cooking supper, and uh, I poured a little bit of oil in the water so that the noodles wouldn't stick together. And she goes, oh, you got, I see bubbles down there. You must have it on. It wasn't turned on. I was like, it ain't turned on. I was like, that's the oil in the water. They don't mix. They separate. That's right. They can't mix. That's right. You can stir them up as much as you want, shake it, kick it, punt it, throw it across the yard, but eventually it'll separate. That's right. Amen. They do not mix. That's right. Oil cannot be mixed with water. That's right. Law cannot be mixed with grace. Amen. You cannot do it. It just ain't going to happen. It's just a wonderful thing that the grace of God it was manifest to me and you. Yes. That God had given us the grace of God. But you know, it's awesome to notice that God became sin for us. And you know, the church is so destitute of joy and happiness today. I mean, it, 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 I don't understand it. I, I'm so happy when I hear about God's Word. When I come here, that's why I never sit in the back for myself because I don't want to see other people. I just want to see the Lord. I want to, I don't want to get right up here so whatever they're saying, if He wants to spit on me, let Him spit on me. If He wants to kick His shoe off and hit me in the face, glory to God. Hey, I want to be right in the front. Now everybody's different. I'm not saying if you sit in the back, you're wrong, or if you sit in the middle. It don't matter where you sit. I'm just saying what I like. What I like ain't going to be what you like. But what I'm saying is I want to come to God's house to hear the preaching of God's Word. Amen. To hear the teaching of God's Amen. Word. Amen. And I want to hear the testimonies of God's people. Amen. The Bible says to exhort one another. Amen. What could make you more happy than to hear about one of your people that in your family that got saved and born again? Amen. There old Bruce was laying in the hospital Ready to die. I mean right here. On the threshold of eternity. And God saved him. Thank you Lord. Praise oh, Lord. Praise Lord. Lord. oh people have no idea. That they walk on the edge of a knife. The precipice that's on each side of them. And they can't even see it. Because they're in darkness. Can you imagine being outside. One night we was out camping. And somebody grabbed my shirt, my cousin did, because I was just walking around, and, and I, he grabbed my shirt, right there's the cliff right there. And then the next morning when it came to the light out, and you see, that would have killed me. I would have died. I mean, it was 100 feet down there. But you know, you don't, people that are lost don't see that. 
That's why the Bible says that they're in darkness. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. Lest the light of the glorious gospel shine in their heart. But here, remember over in Revelations 2 and 4 through 5 when the Lord Himself was talking and He's talking about the church in Ephesus and He said, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, go back, go back. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. A lot of times we get going in a progression and we veer off away from God. And one of, we say, well, God's leading me this way, but it's really the way we want to go. And then God has to throw out a line to us and say, look, you're way off of the path, my friend. Son, you need to come back. You need to remember that you can do nothing without me. You need to remember that I am the vine. You're the branch and not the other way around. I don't sustain God. He sustains me. I am in Him, Mm -hmm. not the other way around. He is the one that does it for me. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Hey, God can remove joy from you. You know that? You believe that, that God can actually remove the joy from a Christian? But in essence, He withholds blessing from us because we don't heed to His Word. And here, these Galatians were doing just that. Paul says, where's that blessedness that you speak of? When I came the first time, no doubt there was shouting and rejoicing and praising God over the great miracle that God had worked in those people's lives. They got saved, born again. And then when, the, then when Paul left to go off to some other place to establish church being led by the Holy Spirit, here comes the devil's crowd. Right, right on in. Everything that God tries to do, the devil wants to tear it down. He wants to send in the tares. Send in the wolves among the sheep. But the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. That's why the Bible commands us to study. In the second Timothy, the Bible tells us, in all in that within the second and third chapter, it tells us to be apt to teach. It also tells us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman need not be ashamed. And it also, but people always quote that verse, but they never say the last part. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Who does that? The Spirit of God. That's why we have denominations. That's why we have people that claim to be saved over here that say you can get saved by dunking under a pool of water. You got people that over here that claim that you can get to God by eating a cookie that becomes Jesus if the person says this little right. prayer. That's right. You got right. people over here that says you gotta you gotta come and confess your sins in a booth to this priest. Right. You got people over here that says a man with a tall white hat that rides around in a glass car can forgive sin for people who had abortions. That's right. That's right. And then you got people over here that says, yeah, you can be saved by grace. It's the grace of God. Mm-hmm. But you gotta be kept by the law. Mm-hmm. That's right. There's all kinds of foolishness. There's people that say, well, there's only one God. Jesus ain't God. There's only one God. God the Father. Jehovah's Witness say Jesus was Michael the Archangel. That He was created. That He didn't raise a bodily... That's contrary to the Bible. Hey, a three-year-old or a six-year-old could read this book and tell you that Jesus Christ rose in a body. Because He said, handle me. He said, a spirit hath not flesh and bones. What did Thomas say? I ain't going to believe that he rose unless I can put my finger in his nail prints and ram my hand in his side. God told him to come and do it. He he saw him though and he believed. You see, it's it's rightly dividing the word of truth. And, And the devil, if he can get people right on the threshold of being saved and pull back, I don't believe nothing makes him happier. And to think that they're there. The Bible tells us plain as day that after after this, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Okay? 
Under the law, there were sacrifices every day. We talked about this before, right? After Jesus came, the law was done away with in Him. He fulfilled it, according to Romans 10, 4, for everyone that believeth in Him unto righteousness. His righteousness is imputed to me because I accept His sacrifice. Therefore, the law can no longer be sought out by someone that's saved. It's, it's fulfilled. The Bible tells us, remember, we've, we've quoted that verse that says he nailing those ordinances that were written against us. Nailing them to his cross and then moving them out of the way. I tell you, Paul first came to these Galatians. The Bible said in verse 14 that he was received as an angel of God. Right. Even as Christ Jesus. That's how willing they were to hear that word. They wanted to hear it. Okay, the gospel of grace was preached to him. And he had a great burden. You read many times where Paul cried, prayed, and agonized over people that he had preached to. And wanted to write epistles to them and tell them, look, I'm, I fear for you, lest you believed in vain. He thought some of them have got right to the threshold of grace and turned back and not really received that freedom. What do we got here tonight? We've got liberty in Christ Jesus. I don't have to worry about the law. Because He fulfilled the law. In Him is my life. The Bible says over there, what he's saying, it was it Galatians chapter 2, where Paul gave that awesome verse. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the love which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And right after that, he said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Jesus died in vain. And then if you say that, then you're saying that God Almighty, who is omniscient, made a mistake in sending His Son to this world to be murdered and butchered and crucified for sin. I got news for you. God don't make mistakes. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but it's true. He does not make mistakes. And here we've got these Judaizers coming down here. And you know... Paul just wanted them. He just wanted them simply to stand upon the truth of the Word of God. Right. What did he say? Received ye the received ye their salvation by the hearing of the law? No, sir. Or by the hearing of faith? Right. Faith can't come by the law. Right. The Bible tells us plain as day that faith cometh by hearing, hearing cometh by the Word of God. Amen. And here he tells him. You know, stand on the Word of God. The minute you stand up for the truth of this book, instantaneously you have made enemies. That's right. right off the bat. Why? Because Christ has many enemies. Right. And when you line up with Him, you line up with all that He stands for, all that He says, everything He commanded. You, if you're going to get on His side, it's all or nothing. Yeah, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You can't straddle the fence. You can't serve two masters. You either serve one and hate the other or love one and despise the other. That's what the Bible said. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. The Bible said my sheep know my voice. Thank you. And another they will not follow. Amen. Will not. That's simple. That's why a lot of these times when, when people, you tell somebody the Word of God and they, don't, they deny it, or they turn from it, yet they claim to be saved, you got to question their soul. If they're saved or not. Something's wrong with them. Because the Bible tells us that we hear God. This ear can hear God. When I hear this book preached, the Holy Ghost that's abiding in this temple tells me that is the truth. What did, what did Jesus say about the Comforter? That it would bear witness of me. Amen. Of Him. Right. Said He'd reprove the world of sin. Yeah, exactly. Righteous judgment and all testify that Jesus Christ. The Bible said whatsoever is born of God testifies that Jesus is the Christ. 
And it says that He came in the flesh. If it says that He didn't come in the flesh, the Bible tells as plain as the nose on your face that those people are of the spirit of the Antichrist. Simple. So like Jehovah's Witness, they say that Jesus is not God. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. There's no greater evil and blasphemy against God than to deny His Son. Period. I ain't got time for them people and you shouldn't either. The Bible says don't bid them into your house. Bid them Godspeed or lest you be partakers of every deed. They come to your door. Hey, go out on the porch and witness to them. Don't let them break the threshold of your home. But here he said, we got no small list of enemies. He said, now I'm not talking about uh, what the Bible talks about, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. The Beatitudes are some people that just run around all day quoting 1 John 4, 8, the end of it. God is love. God is love. God is love. I'm talking about standing for everything in the book. That's right. Come on. That's right. Standing for everything. One of the things that people don't want to stand for today is separation from the world. They don't want to hear about it. And I'll tell you exactly. The, the, the reason the church is in the way it is is because people will not separate their self from this world. You can't have power with God if you're walking in the devil's tracks. It ain't going to happen. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Amen. What fellowship had the child of God with an infidel? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. This, today I had this woman approach me and she needs prayer. Her name is Kim George. She's got two or three little kids, been married and divorced, has a boyfriend that was beaten up on, works in my office, had to get a restraining order to keep them apart. They work in the same place over there. Of course, you got him over here telling lies. And who knows if she may be telling lies over here, trying to pit everybody against each other. You know, everybody always wants to get on a side. That's right. yeah. And she was talking to me today, asking me well, how old my kids were, and asked them how old was they when I told them about September 11th. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? She said, well, what happened? You know, all them people got killed. I said, that's, that's not really what I'm worried about. I said, my kids are homeschooled. I said, Iris was born four days after that. You know, that, that happened in 2011, or 2001, 9-11, 2001, she was born on the 15th. I said, I told them, about, I was in the military, I told them about it all the time. They know about it. They know that Muslims, terrorists, right. nobody wants right. to say it, Muslims, terrorists, right. jihadists, right. radical Islamists, whatever you want to call them, they're terrorists. Right. They, they, they worship a book. And read out of a book, the Koran, that says if you don't convert, then you've got a right to be killed. They have a right to kill you because of that. And their whole, their whole outlook is to convert the entire earth to their religion. So is Jesus. But He don't want us to kill them. He wants us to keep them from being killed by sin and come to the cross and be saved. But God doesn't condone violence against our brethren or our enemies. He said to pray for them. Love our enemies. Do good to those that do bad to you. He said, recompense no man evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. God doesn't condone people going up here and blowing up abortion clinics. God doesn't condone people sitting out there with a snub those 38 waiting for that doctor to come out and shoot him between the eyes. God doesn't condone that trash. God tells us what to do with people that deny him. We're to mark them and avoid them. That's it. Well, hey, God can, God, the Bible said, vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord, I will avenge, I will recompense. Now we won't try to go get revenge on people. Well, I'm going to get him. He did something to me. I will, I'll thank him pay for that. We do that all the time. That's the flesh. Said, well, I would let you borrow $20, but you still owe me 40 from three years ago. That's why, hey, if you need that money, you can have it. That's why I don't let people borrow money. I just give it to them. Yeah. They're like, hey, can I borrow $20 you if I got here? You can have it. Because I know good and well I ain't ever going to see it again. And that's why I don't have to worry about it. Hey, God, uh, Dad can tell you about this. 
there was a, a black man named uh, uh, Sherman or Shelton. I can't remember his name. But he wanted to get all this furniture I was getting rid of when I left Virginia. And how he goes, well, I don't have all this money. And I said, well, you just give me this and you can mail me the rest. I'll give you my address. He said, you trust me to do that? And I said, you're a Christian, aren't you? Didn't you just tell me that you're saved? He goes, yeah. I said, well, if you don't, then God's got your number. That's right. That's right. I was like, I, and if it doesn't come to me, God didn't mean for me to have it. That's right. And if not, then, hey, I'd hate to be you. Yeah. And he never sent me a dime. Right. Who knows what he's doing? It don't matter to me. Right. I'm still fine. I got furniture. God provided. Right. I don't have to worry about it. Hey, he had that. He had a, a, a two car garage that was so full of stuff. He opened that door and he had to go in there like this, that's right. That's right. and disappear around the corner for about twenty minutes, and then come back out and says, oh, "I got room back here for this stuff." <laughs> but I'm telling you, we're not supposed to recompense evil for evil. We will make enemies, and the Bible said we're not supposed to rest the Scripture. We're not supposed to argue about the Scripture. You don't sit there in your heart when the, pre when the man of God's up here preaching and being like, I don't believe he's preaching the word of God when he's reading it word to word. That's right. That's right, brother. That's the way some people are. I mean, I've told people straight to their face what the Bible said and they blatantly deny the truth of it. That's right. That's right. Then people's lost. They can't be saved or they'd recognize this is true. That's right. Man, I tell you, and there's also people that twist it. Right. Twist the word of God. And that's exactly what these people were doing right here. Oh, we're back over here. He says, in verse 16, he said, I'm therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. That's right. That's right. I tell you, I had a conversation with my mother. And she told me, she said, well, I want you guys to come and my mom needs to be saved. I pray to God that she'd be saved. It'd be the greatest thing that ever happened outside of my kids getting saved and my save, being saved myself was to hear that she got saved. But she, we had a conversation around her kitchen and she said, well, I want you to come down and stay with us in Gatlinburg. And I know my brother who claims to be saved, my little brother Christopher, he needs prayer too. Who, needs, who claims to be saved, claims he got saved down here, which I ain't denying it. I'm just saying I can't say yay or nay because I ain't God. But I tell you, the Bible said, by their fruits you shall know them. Amen. A good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, and a corrupt tree cannot, cannot, someone who's not saved cannot do right. They may be morally good, but in the sight of God, they cannot produce anything righteous, period. But I say, she goes, well, I want you to come now. I say, is Christopher going to be there? Yeah. Is his girlfriend coming? Yeah. Then I ain't coming. That's all there is to it. She goes, why? I said, because it ain't right. He shouldn't be sleeping with a woman that he ain't married to. And he's already 27 years old and divorced once. I mean, he needs the Lord. He needs the Lord's help. In his life. I mean that could be me. Right. By the grace of God that could be me. But I, here I was. Simply in one instance. Trying to stand for the truth. Because the Bible said. That fornication is a sin. The Bible said that a fornicators. God will destroy them. Exactly. This body is a temple. It was made. Whether a person gets saved or not. God made this to be a tabernacle. For the living God. He made it for his own glory. Amen. It doesn't matter what people say. Why? This is my body. I'll do what I want to do to it. <laughs> yeah. uh, how many times have you heard that? Then they go get right. tattoos all over their face. Yeah. Get tattoos on their face, their shoulders, their back, their arms and legs. There's got the worst got tattoos from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Leads the youth group over here, this church with a woman pastor. I tell you, I mean it's just confusion. That's right. You might have. But I told her, I was like, I ain't going because it ain't right. And she said, well, you're judging him. And I said, no, he's judging himself right. by the life he's living. Amen. And I said, I'm not the judge anyway. God is. Yeah. I said, Amen. God said it wasn't right. Yeah. And she goes, well, you've done wrong. I was like, you're right. I have done wrong. But that still doesn't change God's word. Right. It's just like these people, just like these people are saying about this woman up here in Kentucky that's trying to stand up for what God's word says about marriage. Yeah. 
It ain't about who she is, what she's done. They're bringing up, well, she's been married three times. Who cares? Who cares if she's been married? She didn't write the book. God did. God's never sinned. And you can't, you got to stand up for a person who stands up on national TV and says, I refuse to sell my convictions because of somebody's pressuring me or the federal Supreme Court says I had to do it. I'll go to jail instead. That's the way a Christian should be. That's the way. She's a a light to this whole nation. And her husband, I've seen an interview, said she's not going to give in. Of course, he knows her better than anybody. He said, she ain't going to give in. I'll have to do without dinner. She ain't going to give in. She'll stay in there. And she said she should. And he said, welcome to Sodom and Gomorrah, because that's where we are. People standing on the Word of God. And what what was the first thing people want to do? Look at them whack jobs over there. Them crazy folks. They need to get with the times. They need to get up to date. God is from everlasting. He's the original old school, what they want to call. Exactly. You remove not the ancient landmark. Amen. Hey, our fathers founded this nation. I watched a video the other day about this uh, constitutional lawyer that said less than a, a hundred and something years ago, in almost every state, that was a penalty by death. Right. Right. Homosexuality was. Yes, right. What has happened? Mm-hmm. We're not standing for the truth. Right. Hey, and you know, I thought about what Dad said. Uh, he, he said all this big, huge rally of people came up. All these RVs started rolling in there. People started standing out there, standing up for God. And I thought about what it must have felt like to be her on that first night in that jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sitting there, when they turned the lights out, and it was just her and the Lord. That's right. And she said, probably prayed to God, asking for strength. Mm-hmm. Give me the strength to do this, God. That's Don't right. let me give in. That's right. And the next thing you know, God whispers in her ear, just like he did to old Elijah. Hey, I've got 7,000 people that haven't bowed their knee to bed. Don't you worry, son. I've got the Calvary's coming soon. And if, hey, it's going to come down the pipe, if they've done it to one, they'll do it to all of us. They're going to find a way to make it against the law. They're going to do it. It's going to come to pass if Christians don't stand up. That's what Paul's telling them here to do. Am I your enemy because I told you the truth? All of a sudden, we become an enemy. You can get along with somebody so good, Brother Layton, until the minute you mention what God says about something, and then all of a sudden, you've got a mortal enemy on your hands. And they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to associate with you no more. They say, well, I just can't, I just can't believe what you believe. I can't believe in a God that would send people to hell. I can't believe in a God that wouldn't love somebody that just was trying to love another human being. The Bible said it's wrong. That's all there is to it. That ought to settle it for me and you. It's a sin, an abomination. It is against God. It's against nature. It's against everything that this book said. They're trying to take away the little pronouns that, that, that tell about gender, this gender identification nonsense. Where in the world have we come to, folks? That they want to take he and she, him and her, out of all of our language. They're saying, Z. Instead of we, Z. These transgender folks, they can't figure out if they're a man or a woman. The Bible said, have you not heard in the beginning, Jesus said, he, male and female created he them. That's what Jesus said. He said it in the Garden of Eden and he said it in Bethlehem when he came back. In front of the whole world, he said, hey, male and female created here. There is a male, there is a female. There's nothing in between. You're either one or the other. And if you're a female and you want to be a male, then you need to get saved. That's just a manifestation of the sin nature. Hey, it rears its ugly heads in all kinds of ungodly ways. I tell you, we need to sit around and read this book and study this book and hide it in our hearts that we may not sin against God and be able to tell our fellow man the truth. 
Tell them the way to Calvary. There's no greater love than you tell a person, look, you're dying and going to hell, but I know how to keep you out of there. Amen. It's in this book right here. Amen. Whosoever will, let him come unto me and drink of the water of life freely. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden with your sins. Cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Paul said the words are nigh to every one of us, even in our very mouth. That's right. All you got to do is open and let it out. Save me! Amen. Seven simple words that publican said. God be merciful unto me, a sinner. Amen. That's what he said. What he said. What well, was that prayer in comparison to that great, swelling, eloquent speech that that publican said? Well, he got saved and got justified, mm -hmm. which by justification means that in the sight of God you never sin. That's right. The Bible said he went to his house justified. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees had already been told by the Lord Jesus himself, hey, say, you're going to die in your sin. That's, right. That's, right. That's it, you're going to die in your sin. You know why it's so hard to win people who are already religious? If they're already wrapped up in a religion, it's harder to win them than it is if somebody ain't never heard the gospel. That's right. Never heard anything about church. Mm -hmm. Never heard it, never down the door of the church house. But you get some religious hypocrite uh -huh. and they'll never get saved. Right. Right. Because they rest upon their own works, right. upon their own knowledge. And they don't believe with the heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God raised Him from the dead. The Bible said if you believe that, then God will save you. But people don't want to hear that. They want to hear, well, so you're telling me that all of my times that I attend church don't mean nothing to God? No! If you reject God and die and go to hell, it don't mean diddly squat. Hey, what did He say? Lord, we've done many Wonderful works in thy name. <laughs> in thy name. What was it? The name of Jesus did it. They couldn't do it. What happened to them one fellows when they tried to go cast out that demon over there? The demon turned around and looked at them and said, Hey, I know Jesus and I know Paul. Who are ye? Hey, they ripped them from top to bottom, buddy, and they left screaming naked running through the streets. You try to go face the devil and you'll get your hide busted. You better have God on your side. <laughs> you better bow down on your face and put on your armor before you start waving your hand in the devil's face. He'll black both your eyes and turn you around and toss you out of the house. Hey, the devil is powerful, friends. The Bible said he's subtle. The Corinthians said, you know, hey, don't be amazed when his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. God's got men that stand up on Sunday morning that live clean in the sight of men. He's got ministers that stand up that's got a degree from the seminary. He's got ministers that have read this Bible from cover to cover. He's got ministers that get out there and beat the hedges and the highways all day long that are more zealous than you ever dream about being. But they're doing it for the devil. We've got to be wise as serpents. That's what we got to be. And the only way we're going to get wise is to get in the book. Amen. Let me read you some scripture over here. I know I'm bogging down right here, but this is, this is good stuff right here. Not because I'm doing it, because God, God said it. But here, uh, let me read you some scriptures in Proverbs chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 5, Get wisdom. Get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. What does verse 7 say? Wisdom is the principal thing. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. That's it. That's the starting point. The Bible also says that the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in Christ. God is the key. His Son is the key to opening all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's why when you get saved, 
you can read this and believe it. Right. But when you ain't saved, this don't make no sense to you. That's right. He says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Not get an education. Not get a better job. Not get a new car. Not get a bigger house. Get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. And when you get it, exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall give thee honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of what? Grace. Grace. Glory to God. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. For she is thy life. Amen. And the Bible tells us right here, Enter not into the path of the wicked. Right. Psalms 1 and 1. Good yes. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Hey, don't do it. Don't fall for the tricks of these ungodly, silver-tongued devils. It says... And go not into the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. The Bible said to flee from all appearance. If it looks like the devil, you need to turn tail and run. Run. The Bible said we are to hate the garment that's even spotted by the flesh. The Bible tells us we're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Get the truths. How are we going to get that wisdom? This book. Asking God. Right. How did Solomon get wisdom? He asked God. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. God gave it to him. Right. Yes. And many, many other things that he didn't even ask for. Tells us in James there. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. <laughs> I tell you. Now back to Galatians. Verse 17 said, They zealously affect you. Right? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that you might affect them. People want to come to your door and tell you when you are in, you're not in. Yeah, that's right. They say, look, you may think you're in, but you ain't in that's unless right. you side with us. That's right. I ain't going to tell nobody that you need to believe what I believe that's right. to be that's saved. Right. That's where people mess up. I may be mixed up on some things in here. I don't desire to be, but I ain't above it. I could be mixed up on something in this book somewhere because I don't know it all. But if I tell them, if you'll believe this book right here, you will never go wrong. Don't believe what I say. Don't believe what any man says. Believe this. Romans 3 and 4. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's a simple saying. Glory to God for it. He said, hey, they want to, they want to get you in. They say, hey, brother, I'm already in. Because this book says I'm in. I don't want to be in your number. I want to be in that number. I want to be in that great number when the saints go marching in. And according to the Word of God, I am. Because Jesus saved my soul. Because I believed, I cried out to God, and I said, Jesus, you are my only hope. Hey, and I rest my dying soul right here upon this book. If there's no other way, I'm still going to believe it. I, ain't gonna, I don't care what people say. I don't care if I go home tonight and I get all kinds of phone calls and I turn on the TV and it said, we have found proof, undeniable proof that the Bible is a lie. I'll turn off the TV. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know why? Because that proof is right here. Right. How many times has there come something on TV that's been a lie? Right. Well, we just found out that eggs give you cancer. Yeah. 
Five years later, hey, you need to eat eggs because they're the best thing that you can eat in this world. Right. We were wrong about that. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about you guys that have given up eggs for the last five years. We're, we're sorry about that. Yeah, that's right. Then the next thing you come out, well, you don't need to eat eggs. They make you fat. Five years later, you don't need to eat eggs. They give you cancer. All back to the start again. You can't believe Deadly Squad it's on TV. Everything on TV has an agenda behind it. Every politician, every news station, people are like, well, I'll stick with Fox News because they're conservatives. Yeah, and they're owned by one of the most ungodly men on this planet. Owns pornographic magazines and everything else. CNN, just as bad. MSNBC, just as bad. The Blaze. Right. New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. It don't matter. If you want to get some up-to-date news, why don't you read some prophecy? I'll give you a headline right here. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Boy, that's a headline right there. That's exactly what's happening. You drive down the road, over there on the bypass, you see a big sign that says, come on in here on Thursday nights, you drunkards and drug addicts, and, and we'll get you in this 12-step program. And bypass the one-step program to Calvary Amen. to take care of all sin and all of its yeah. symptoms. The one remedy. That's the way the doctor is. He wants to treat your symptoms. Don't want to ever give you the medicine to take care of the cause of it. They want you to keep coming back to them. Keep coming back. Little pill pushers in a white coat. Hey, I get kickbacks from this company, so I want you to buy these drugs. That's what they don't tell you. God don't ask nothing of you. God gives you everything, and you ain't got nothing to give Him in the first place. Amen. God gives it to you because He sees where you're pitiful and you're in need of it. Amen. I thank God for that tonight. Thank you, Lord. But here, see, man wants to get his little hands in God's business. Well, I want to be the treasurer because I want to see how much money Brother Larry is getting paid every month. That's right. That's right. Now, if he's getting paid more than so-and-so, I, I think we ought to take a vote on that because right. I don't think he's preaching up to that level of pay. That's the way right. people are. Right. When I was at Victory Baptist Church, I'm not going to name their names, but it's in Virginia. Uh, I think the pastor loved the Lord. But they just got in a rut like all these churches do. They just fall in a form and a fashion. I don't believe in tithing envelopes. I don't believe in that. Now you can be, I ain't going to fall out with you over it. But when you put something in the offering plate and you put your name on it, and you put your amount on it, and you put your money inside there, and then somebody goes back in the back room and is counting that, and he said, well let's put the good Christians over here, and these tightwads over here. And then these people that are so dirt poor, they can't even afford a, a welcome mat. All they can just afford a mat that says well. They can't even afford the rest of the word on it. They separate people. I don't want, I don't want you to see what I give to God. I give 10% of my pay. And I try to give 15% sometimes because I went a long time without paying my tithes and I want to redeem them. So that's biblical. But what I give God ain't none of your business. And what you give God definitely ain't none of my business. Hey, we throw it in the plate. They throw it in the bank. God moves His heart to do something with it. If we love Him and we, uh, we support Him and we think God put Him here, then hey, glory to God, go do it. I'll help you deliver it, whatever it is. That's what it's for. Bring unto me the tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Not into somebody else's pocket. Not over to somebody else's house because you think they need something. You want to go give them your tithes. That ain't biblical. Bring them into the church and the church distributes it. And if you don't believe that, that's all right. Just read on it. Study on it. I'm not going to tell you that. I ain't, I'm not falling out with anybody over anything in this Bible. You just believe what you read. That's all you need to do. But I tell you, I know I've only covered a few verses tonight and I feel like the Lord... Well, leave us a stop. I mean, you could preach on one verse forever. But I mean, just that simple one. Where's the blessedness you speak of? Where's our joy? Where's the happiness in us? A lot of people sit on the pew like somebody's beat them half to death. They come dragging in here. I'm going to tell on Iris right here. 
when she was younger, I used to tell her to do something, and she would just, I mean, just completely from head to toe show her disgust for what I was telling her to do. She'd be like, Didn't you, Iris? She was a kid. I did it. Yep. Some other kids are just like kicking stuff. They don't want to do it. Go in her bedroom and slam their door. Yeah. My brother's girl goes, mmm. Yeah, right. mm. <laughs> yeah, they just go, mm. hold their breath. Yeah. All kinds. Kids do all kinds of stuff. That's right. I tell you, why are we not happy? God saved me, Elise. God reached down in a miry pit. I was sinking and up to my neck in sin and death and sorrow and going under the tide, Brother Layton. And I was like, oh, Peter, I said, Lord, save me. And immediately set me on a solid rock and established my goings. And he goes with me every step of the way. A lot of the times he carries me. Because I can't do it on my own. I just thank God for the privilege of being here tonight. Thank God for what I felt. Thank God for the joy of my salvation. His salvation. That He gave me. I mean, we got a lot to be thankful for, folks. Hey, I'm alive. You know, I, there's people that ain't here tonight because they're sick. They're, they've got body ailments. They cannot physically be here. I constantly think about old brother Joe's mom. Remember her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a sweet, sweet yeah. woman. And I talked to her and I said, boy, I wish you could, you could come. She goes, well, I can't do nothing if somebody don't come and get me. And I thought about what old the Lord told Peter. He said, now you put your clothes on and you go wherever you want to go. Right. He said, someday you ain't going to be able to do that. Right. He said, You're right. gonna, somebody else is going to girt you and they're going to carry you where you don't right. want to go. That's the way it is, ain't it? Yes. I, that's why I thank God for Sister Elise. I mean, she still lives by herself, takes care of herself. I mean, that's, that's a blessing from God. Amen. I mean, how many people are in their early 60s in a nursing home, yeah. wasting away, nobody caring about them whatsoever? I mean, they're everywhere. God's grace is unbelievable. Yes, it is. The blessings of God are the greatest things this side of heaven. I tell you, I'm just glad I'm saved tonight. Amen. I'm glad I got a house. I'm glad I got a car. I'm glad I got strength and health to go work a job. I'm glad I'm not a nitwit and I'm not in an institution. Right. Hey, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I could be in a padded cell right now. Right. I may deserve to be in one, but I ain't in there yet. Right. Thank God. They may put me one in one here for long. I guess I'll just have to preach to the wall. The glory to God, yeah, we can praise God and bounce off the walls, do flips and somersaults, hey, whatever God wants us to do. That's why I say, I, in a way, in a way, I honestly hope they put us in prison. Me. Because I like to preach in a prison. I like to be in a cell where people couldn't get away from you. Where they couldn't say, well, it's time to end the service, you need to cut it off. And I'd be like, no, it's going to go on. I'm in here for seven years. And I'm going to tell you every day about Jesus. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Amen. Boy, they'd, get, they'd let you out probably. Yeah. They'd put you. They'd take you out and separate you from everybody. Yeah. Put you where you, they couldn't hear you. Lock you up in a room somewhere. But God would get an earthquake, wouldn't he? Break us out. <laughs> right. I thank God for the privilege tonight. I hope you got a blessing.